HTC have gone for broke in terms of specs with their Android-powered Evo 4G initially available exclusively on Sprint in the USA. A 1 GHz Snapdragon CPU inside, the Evo 4G has an 8 megapixel camera, 720p video recording, kickstand, 4.3-inch display, and amazingly, HDMI output, so you can plug it in as a video source into a TV, for example. The other usual top-end specs include WiMAX, half a gigabyte of RAM, and a 1500 mAh battery. Just don't ask how much it costs or when it's coming to your neck of the woods. Everything about the Sony Ericsson Vivas rather screams low rent feature phone and uprated LG cookie, for example. It's surprisingly small and light and 100% uh, plastic. Yet, under the hood, there's a seriously powerful 720 megahertz power VR processor, oodles of RAM, a smartphone OS and a pretty good top-notch camera. On the downside, there's a no-frills, kludgy version of S65th edition with absolutely no effort made by Sony Ericsson, plus a flashlight-based tabbed home screen and a whizzy kinetic scrolling media suite for viewing photos and videos and listening to music, but which again makes no effort whatsoever to integrate with the rest of the OS. All of which makes for a Jekyll and Hyde smartphone, if ever there was one. Let's concentrate on the hardware first. The unique selling point of the Vivas, other than its uh, diminutive uh, human curvature design, is its video camera, 1280 by 720 pixel frame resolution with continuous autofocus. That's some serious multimedia capture, though actual quality isn't light years better than my trusty N86 that I'm filming this on. And the audio capture is very quiet. And then back up, adjust focus pretty quickly and silently. So. Uh top marks there. We'll do another test down to grass level. This is full HD recording. The sound's a little quiet but reasonable quality. Let's go down to the ground, see how close it will go. That's pretty impressive, pretty impressive HD, widescreen, continuous autofocus video on the Sony Ericsson Vivas. Provided you're happy to adjust the volume later in your desktop editing software, most casual users will be more than happy with the video capture. I'm just not so sure about the direct and much vaunted YouTube uploading. Most people will be happier with stills capture too in decent light. The biggest disappointment here is that there's no LED flash. Yes, there's an LED here, but it's an always on, always off video light and it's hopeless for both still and video. Why the heck wasn't a Xenon flash used on such a camera centric device like this? And while we're on the subject, for a device which utterly depends on its camera functionality, why on earth is the camera glass on the back here not only unprotected, but also just about the most prominent, easy to scratch place? The rest of the hardware is getting there for Sony Ericsson. There's no proprietary port, thank goodness, with 3.5mm audio here and micro USB here instead, plus micro SD card support under the battery cover. Uh, the battery is up to 1200mAh, unlike the measly 1000 effort on the Satio. The main 3.2 inch display is TFT, gorgeous indoors, but cleverly designed to be almost unreadable when you're out and about shooting photos and videos in bright sunlight. The touchscreen is resistive, but works well enough for general use. Just expect to find QWERTY input fiddly. As mentioned earlier, the user interface is split neatly in two, or maybe three, depending on how you're counting. The flashlight-based home screen is disappointing, and the only active part of it is a Twitter client here, which is so basic and fiddly that no one in their right mind will use it for real. There's a download option to grab more content, but there's only this cute aquarium so far, nothing actually useful. The shortcuts work well enough, but it's all rather underwhelming. The add-on media suite runs in its own sweet world, ignoring any theme set in the rest of the interface and using its own direct manipulation paradigm. Uh, at least video playback was trouble free, unlike on the Satio. So at least some of the bugs have been exorcised for the Vivas. Away from Media Suite, Sony Ericsson was faced with a choice, implementing touch-to-drag scrolling, Nokia N97 style, or, or just not bothering. Sadly, they opted for the latter, juggling application icons here into vague groups of 12 icons or less, in the hope that the user would never notice. 
Inside Apps 2, all dialogues and lists have to be scrolled using the fiddly side of screen scroll bar. It's not very 2010. Google Maps is preloaded and can be upgraded as needed, which is good, while YouTube's S60 client is also preloaded and can't be upgraded, which is not good. In terms of real-time navigation, there's WisePilot here, a Java app that's installed as a trial version. It's clunky, but it does work. You do get a couple of neat Symbian native games. SX3 is a snowboarding spectacular and Valley Master Pro is a terrific little driving game. Both are accelerometer driven. Uh, you also get a spirit level applet shown here and a Java Facebook client. Other new applications are in theory pushed out through Sony Ericsson's Playnow store, seen here loading up. But this is implemented quirkily using web in a way that's incredibly easy for a user to end up with half a dozen copies of web in memory all running independently. It's a good thing there is lots of RAM in the VVAS. The behavior is not necessarily a problem, but it's just so inelegant. Uh, like everything else in the VVAS, apart from the uh, physical form factor. If you need this continuous autofocus and video capture, then the VVAS is your only option currently. Or maybe you need something tiny and under 100 grams. For most viewers of this show, though, I suspect that the, the catalogue of worries, caveats and criticisms above may have put you off. Can Sony Ericsson fix many of the problems in software? Yes. Will they? Mm, not sure. <laughs> the VVAS. Can you help support The Phone Show and keep it going through 2010? There's a monthly subscriber prize giveaway to see this URL. Thanks if you can help. When push comes to shove, which really is the phone uh, you feel you can bet your life on? As a lightning pole for The Phone Show, I ask you viewers, uh, you're on a desert island uh, with 3.5G though, unusually, for a year. You're allowed one smartphone, but which? Before revealing my own choice, here are some of yours um, from Twitter. Tim Salmon says the Motorola Milestone if I had no PC. Adonis Demon says the iPhone 3GS. I'd be pretty bored, so I'd need all the apps I could get. Monkey Matt says the HTC Desire. I only picked it up this afternoon, so a year alone with it would be good. Uh, Steve O'Hare says Nokia E71 and E72, so I can write that novel. Red Shovel says iPhone 3GS again for sheer number of good apps to kill boredom. David Gilson says Nokia N97, need the lens cover to keep the sound out and the keyboard to write home and the weight to crack coconuts. GJC says HTC Touch HD2, yes it's Windows Mobile but uh, if I'm only going to have one device I want the largest screen ever. Digital Waterfall says Nokia E71, again can't beat having a proper keyboard to type with. Call says Nokia N900, as it's the most self-contained. Uh, Stuart McGill says iPhone 3GS again. Uh, hopefully a power socket is handy though, at least twice a day. I'll need it. Sheth K says Nokia E63 with a huge battery, and it's Symbian, so no battery hog. Ratcat, that's Nick Robinson, says iPhone 3GS without a doubt, because I could never get bored with all games and apps in the store. Bdog64 says, Nexus One, I'm going to need as much freedom as possible, given the situation. Katie Neely says, Nokia N900, the hardware is awesome, and the software is getting better every day. The Symbian blog says, it would have to be the Nokia N900 for me, large screen, powerful enough, and an awesome browser. JCB Digger says, iPhone 3GS, there's that phone again, if we're allowed App Store credit, that is, <laughs> for those apps. Roj Blake says, N97 Mini from Nokia, I need my keyboard. AJ says Nokia N82. Here we go. I'll have complete visibility even in the presence of sun, something which the N86 can't do. N86 Raffi says Nokia N900 because it has the best flash support among all the smartphones. A real Swiss army knife, he says. Steve Greenslade says, providing I can have a solar charger, it would have to be the iPhone 3GS. Email, web browsing, YouTube, BBC iPlayer, Tweety, etc. for keeping in touch. Stephen Quinn 58 says Nokia N97 again. Plenty of media and good screen, and I know it that well that I can fix it if it stops working. A few more. Joey Fallon says again Nokia N82. There might be beautiful natives to photograph out there in the jungle. Uh, you wish. Angel Rock Luna says I chose a Motorola Droid because of the big screen, hardware quality, speed, and apps from the Android market. Ophler says really iPhone. Great for the Sky Sports app. Others can take N82s from Nokia, but they'll all be huddled around my iPhone once the footy starts. Matthew says, maybe not a real smartphone. What about the Samsung S7550? It's fully solar charged. And this is a desert island. Good point. 
Shusha wears red, says Nokia N86, no doubt. Still the best all-round phone, all the better to take desert photos with. Um, overall, the iPhone 3GS polled the most votes, as you can probably uh, count up yourself, followed by the Nokia N900. As for me, I'm plumping for the old warhorse that's been with me through thick and thin, through event after adventure, after crisis, since spring 2007. It's all metal. It's got a four-inch widescreen, transflective display, so it'll be great in the island sun, a huge battery, the best QWERTY keyboard in the business, graphics, accelerated processor, mature, very stable OS, and a surprisingly good camera, and it's not very expensive now. Yes, first reviewed in Smartphone Show 25, I choose the Nokia E90 communicator, which to this day holds its head high in the smartphone ecosystem. It's hard to find new, mind you, and you'll only have mine when you're prizing it out of my cold, dead hands. Hi Steve and viewers of The Phone Show. The current phone I'm using is the Nokia N82. I got this phone originally because it's a 5 megapixel camera and Xenon flash. I also got it because of its crisp video, which is very useful for all my YouTube videos. Thing I, things I like about it are the camera and the video capture, the Ovi App Store, 3G, Wi Fi, Bluetooth, 3.5mm jack, micro USB port on the side, and so on. Things I don't like about it are the slightly small 2.4 inch screen, which is slightly small to today's standards of smartphones. Also, don't like the slightly uh, plastic or cheap feel to it. Also, the keyboard takes a bit of getting used to. I've had this phone for nine months, and I'm looking into the new iPhone next. Thanks, Steve. 